Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, Geico can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners or renters coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Always good to catch up with uh, Wendy Patrick, who is an attorney, and take a look at the uh, legal look at some of the uh, crazy stories in our news. Wendy, welcome back in. Thanks for being here. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. I'm a hunter and hunters will understand this phrase. It's called cull the herd, which literally means to separate or remove and usually kill inferior animals out of a herd so as to reduce numbers or remove undesirable traits from the group as a whole. Cull the herd could not apply more in the situation with this mother who's let her kid, a minor, sniff meth with her and get the kid into a position where he's hallucinating. This this mom's got to go. Wow, I was wondering which of the stories you were going to uh, go to with that analogy. This is really something that is almost unbelievable to read. Um, you're correct. It's one of those stories that kind of has you wondering, why were there drugs in the house? Uh, why did she give them to her son? How was it, thank God, that this was detected? Obviously, it was because a relative had called. But it's more than bad parenting when you're talking about methamphetamine. Now, this woman, just so everybody knows, she was charged with child abuse and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. And it involves giving her 14-year-old son methamphetamine on three separate occasions, which reportedly caused him to hallucinate. And she ended up admitting to giving him the drugs, thinking it would help him relax, air quotes. You know, sometimes when these stories are publicized, as a career prosecutor, I just hope and pray that education will eradicate this kind of addiction. Because if there aren't drugs in the house, in other words, if the parents aren't doing them, um, if the caretakers aren't doing them, then we don't have this issue of children being exposed to such harmful, dangerous substances. You know, addiction is, is real in our country, and it fuels a total lack of judgment in a lot of these sure. kinds of cases that we read about. Look, I, I think everybody listening either has an immediate family member suffering and dealing and battling addiction, or they know somebody that does have this of problem. Of some kind. You're absolutely but, right. But, and that is one of but the worst. that does not excuse actions, and I'm sorry, prayer, forgiveness is fine accountability for your actions has got to happen. Now, here, you're a former prosecutor. First of all, this woman needs to go to prison for 20 years. Okay, he's 14 <laughs> years old. She's serious business, allegedly holding foil with heated methamphetamine while the teenager used a straw to take a hit and then started hallucinating. Thank God for this family member that turned them in. So as a former yeah. prosecutor, former prosecutor, now you see this a lot, you know, minors are abused and neglected and treated terribly by family members, and yet the courts seem to somehow want to, oh, let's put mom in rehab and reunite the family for a little happy ending. Never happens. Why do they do that? Well, I'm a current prosecutor. I've been a prosecutor for 23 years, and I can tell you that the very first line of defense is separation, whether it's through custody, whether it's through giving the child to somebody else. And then after that punishment, remember punishment serves a number of a variety of purposes. One is deterrence. One is obviously removing a dangerous person from society. One is rehabilitation. After that initial stage is done, which is, looks like it's going to be done here, then and only then, when, when you're within the stages of punishment, do courts look at, well, now what do we do to attempt to make sure this never happens again? Now, obviously, sometimes punishment Here's an idea. Here's an idea. Don't put that mom with that kid ever again. End exactly. of story. No, and that's that's usually the first, that's usually what happens immediately. But after you separate the mom and the kid, then after that, you want to make sure that that she never engages in this kind of behavior again. And then you kind of move on to, well, is is custody alone going to work? How about custody plus rehabilitation? How about this? How about that? There's so many different things the courts look at because remember, they not only want to punish and remove the child from the mother, but they also want to, if they can, rehabilitate the conduct. It, you know, I could take up the whole rest of your show with this topic because there are so when it comes to mm. drug addiction, there are so many angles. Our knee jerk response is separate the family. And we do 100 percent. But not permanently. That, not well, that's what I was saying. After that, 
then courts have to decide, like you say, will it be permanent? If not, what is it, five years? Is it until the child is 18? Or is it until the mother's rehabilitated? And who decides that? I mean, relapse. Well, you, you talk about my my that. my position. My position on this is pretty clear. You you abuse a child like this mother did with a 14 year old son or any minor in the home. You're done with your parental rights forever. You know, that child's 18. When the, when the child turns 18, and the, and the child may decide or young adult at that point, hey, I want to really kind of reconcile with my mom or dad. That's up to them as an adult. But until they're 18, you don't get the option again, mom and dad. Sorry, you blew it. Yeah, there are lots of cases that involve exactly that, where it is permanent separation, and unless and until you know the child is 18 and, and chooses otherwise. But it depends on what the facts are. You know, there are sometimes mm. that mothers and fathers are charged with failure to protect. So let's say it wasn't the mom that gave the kid the meth. Let's say it was her her husband or her boyfriend. There are lots of child endangerment related scenarios that right. involve different, and you wouldn't necessarily think permanent separation would be warranted for each and every one of those. Addiction is one of those borderline ones where you normally yeah. do have this kind of separation, but if there's no intent or malice or whatever it is, then courts have to decide. Now, methamphetamine, that, that's pretty severe. I mean, we're not talking about like yeah. pop. Th- th- this is now. a pretty clear cut here uh, situation. Yeah, Mom's 38, the kid's 14. She lit up some tin foil with the meth on Three it and let the kid use his trotus. Three, that's right. So it wasn't just once. And yeah, that's what yeah. really struck me about eh. this story is, you know, it's an isolated incident, lapse in judgment. It was three times between Thursday and Saturday. And, and who Give knows? me the I mean, black robe and the gavel. I'll settle this in 10 seconds. Yeah, this is <laughs> yeah I think you've already settled it in the court of public opinion here. <laughs> well, Wendy, I appreciate you. What a stupid, crazy story. And parents, you know, you got options. You know, you, you act responsible or you're not a parent. That's all there is to it in my mind. Your happiest spring starts with Lowe's, and Lowe's has everything your lawn needs to look good. Like Scott's Triple Action Lawn Fertilizer, starting at $29.98, and save $30 on the Craftsman 20-Volt Trimmer Blower Combo Kit. Was $129, now only $99. Create a season full of green and get the most out of spring. Lowe's, home to any budget, home to any possibility. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, about 317 through 323. U.S. only. Scott's offer excludes Alaska and Hawaii.